Hello and welcome to the 41st Octoprint on Air episode. I'm your host, Gina Heuske, still without any B in my name. And yeah, just like every other episode of these, I'm going today to talk about uh, what I've been up to, what the next step, uh, steps are. We'll have a quick look at the stats and then I'll also tackle two Q&A um, questions actually cues and, and give you the A's uh, that have been that had been submitted before this. Um, so this uh, episode is a recording. So no live chat, no live questions that I'll have to ta uh, tackle. Just that so that you know. Um, and I guess we'll jump right into it. So what I've been up to. Okay, so since the last one of these, which has been a while actually, uh, and uh, as to the reasons as to why it has been this long we'll, we'll get to in a bit but um, yeah the main focus since then has actually been working on 170 um, first of all finalizing it in order to be able to uh, push out the first release candidate and this is actually what happened on August August 4th then on August 11th so a week later a second RC followed then a third on September 13th, and finally the full release happened on October 10th. All in all, the release candidates are something like uh, 2000 instances and a collective 12.8, so almost 13 years of print time. So I would say they have been tested quite well this time around. And uh, after the release so far, the only uh, problems that have been reported are actually the usual suspects. So outdated and broken environments causing issues during update, more or less. Um, and of these, we actually have seen two very, very common issues this time around. And, and, and if I'm if I'm honest, also the last couple of times, but then it wasn't as, as prevalent, so to speak. And that is uh, one being an update failure due to some import error uh, for a null handler logger, which gets reported, which is actually due to an, uh, a, a weird third party logging dependency that an old version of the Printtime Genius plugin pulled in. And even if you uninstall the plugin, the, the, the weird dependency stays. And on some environments, apparently not on all, but on some, this then causes conflicts with the actual internal Python logging module leading to this error message. The solution is easy. You just have to uninstall the module. And uh, this is also explained in the FAQ entry for this. And there is also a, a small little plugin that you can install that will do this for, your, uh, for, for yourself and, uh, if you do not want to do this via the command line. Uh, so if you are affected by this, then please check that out. And another problem that we've seen a lot and actually more so this time around than the last couple of times is some weird assertion error caused by uh, the pip command that is used for updating Octoprint, which in some cases, but apparently only on Octopi 16, uh, 016 because of the pip version bundled with that, seems to fail, uh, seems to be triggered. And the solution for that is simply updating the, 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 uh, the pip and uh, this is also all in an FAQ entry and uh, the, the, the steps that you need to take for that are outlined there as well. No plugin for this, you'll have to enter the command line in order to fix that, but it is an easy and fast fix that should not cause any problems at all and get you up and running again in no time. So um, considering that I think eight or nine issues alone were opened on the Octoprint bug tracker concerning these two problems that aren't with Octoprint itself, but actually the environment it's running in. Uh, there is now a new FAQ entry for general update problems that I have pinned for the next two months to the community forums and that I will also have pinned to the issue tracker at all times uh, when a new update has been rolled out. No, not, not actually at all times, but <laughs> you know you know what I mean. Um, so in the hopes that people will actually find it and not ask the same questions again and again, because for some reason, apparently no one seems to read the FAQ, but okay. Um, by the way, if you have any pointers as to why, uh, if, it, if you think it is too complicated or something, just tell me and, and ideally, please also make uh, improvement suggestions. Um, because, yeah, I, I have the feeling that we get a lot of repeated questions of things that are actually already covered in the FAQ. So for some reason, people either do not find them or they do not want to find them. 
uh, either way apparently there is some room for approve approval here so i'm uh, open to get some suggestions as to how yeah so that was a big chunk of all the time uh, spent since we last saw each other Another thing that I did, and that is something that I only announced this week on uh, the Octoprint Twitter account, more or less, uh, but those of you who have installed a new version of Octopi this past couple of days will also already have noted is um, there is now a new version of Octopi circling around. And it's not actually a new version of Octopi, it's an updated version of Octopi. So the thing is, so far when you downloaded Octopi, uh, you always got the same image that you got when it was released. So uh, the current Octopi, I think, was released in January of this year. And back then, Octoprint 152 was still current. So whenever you had you, you downloaded a new, new Octopi image or flashed a new Octopi image, you would get that version, including an older version now of Octoprint and have to update Octoprint right away and all that. And I I can see that this is a bit annoying to everyone. And it also causes additional upgrade um, overhead or, or rather upgrade testing overhead for me. So uh, I was rather motivated to solve this. But what I didn't want was something like rebuilding the Octopi image fully from the ground up whenever there was a new Octoprint version, because that also pulls in some system dependencies and maybe also a new PIP version and, and whatnot. So that would change the the image so much so that I would not feel comfortable having that automated and would actually require another whole uh, RC phase just for the image. So that was not something that I wanted to do. What I did instead is uh, I created a new tool called Customizer. And Customizer is basically a, a slimmed down version of Custom Pi OS, which we use for building the Octopi image. And it um, is a customization tool for RPI images. So what it does is it uh, it you, you give it an image file to work on, in this case, the stable Octopi image, and then it um, emulates the Raspberry Pi environment on that, mounts it, and allows you to run a set of scripts that you have predefined on this image. And in the case of Octoprint, or rather the, the, the updated version of Octopi that I now have uh, made available for general availability. This is run against the current Octopi image in order to then just update Octoprint to the latest version. Nothing more, nothing less. So basically what it does now for you and, and provides you an image with everything already done for you is just the same as if you were downloading that and downloading the, the, the old stable image and just immediately update Octoprint through the built-in uh, software update plugin. But now you get it right away like that with all new changes and all fixes already applied. And uh, so that saves you hassle. And it also saves me hassle because uh, it reduces the amount of combinations that I have to test, version combinations that I have to test in the future. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing about Customizer is that I build it so that, first of all, it runs in Docker. And second of all, it also runs on GitHub Actions. And now there is a nice little workflow in place that you can also take a look at if you want to on the repository octoprint slash octopi up to date that will uh, download the latest octopi image, determine which version of octoprint to include, run Customizer, prepare a release, dump the image into the release, and then that's that. And um, it would all, will also generate a bunch of metadata files that then allow the new Raspberry Pi imager to get this image as well and display it for you, uh, to you for downloading. And that means it's now a very, yeah, a very uh, a streamlined process. Uh, whenever a new Octoprint release gets pushed out or a release candidate gets released, uh, an Octopi image will be built that is so uh, that includes that already, and uh, the Raspberry Pi imager will offer you the latest stable Octopi with the latest stable Octoprint at all times, and it will also, if such, uh, if we are in an in, in an RC phase at that point, it will also give you access to the. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, it will also give you access to the uh, the Octopi image with the RC. And because uh, I could tell you a lot about that now and you would still not know what I'm talking about, I figured I would simply show you how things will look now. So uh, let me quickly switch you over here. 
Um, so this is the Raspberry Pi Imager tool, version one, th uh, version 1.6.2. And you can choose an OS here. And actually, I already did that. Uh, if you if you do that for the first time, then you will just land here. And then you can say other specific OS and can say Octopi. And up until recently, this still had the normal stable version from January with Octoprint 1.5.3, 1.5.2 something. And now it actually shows you Octopi stable, which is an Octopi 018 with the just on yeah a couple of days 10 days ago released version of octoprint 170 and you also see that it was released on that day should there now be a 171 bam that will upgrade should there be a new rc you will get a second entry right underneath here where it will say octopi release candidate or pre-release i i think it will say octoprint pre pre-release and then it will say something like octopi 018 with octoprint 180rc1 in the description for example so that has been built in and the same thing will also now happen when you go to octoprint.org, go to download and want to download the image directly. This here will also automatically update now. Uh, so you will get the, the, the download link here will always point to the latest build. And if there is an RC, you will also get another entry that will point to that. So you will always have access to the latest and greatest and you will no longer have to manually update Octoprint first thing on your Octopi image in the future, hopefully. And all of that fully automated. That is really, really nice. Yeah. And all of that is made possible by this, which I mentioned is Customizer. And as you can see, this is has a long readme. And why does it have, have this long of a readme when I am the primary user of that? Well, I hope I won't stay the primary user of that. The idea here is that over the course of the past couple of years, we have seen a lot of cases where some vendor wanted to offer their own custom version of Octopi, basically with everything that Octopi already does, but maybe some custom configuration included, some custom plugins. And we've seen it a lot in the recent times that people in that case simply booted Octopi and did the customization that they wanted and then created an image from this booted copy and distributed that. And this is a big, big security issue because on the first boot of a Raspberry Pi image, a ton of stuff gets generated. And on the first boot of Octopi specifically, even more stuff gets generated. For example, Octoprint's API key, which pretty much gives you full access to the instance. So you really do not want that to be part of the distributed image that everyone, every single one of your users will then use because they will all share the same API key. So if someone somehow were gained to access, uh, gain access to one of the instances, they would have full control over it. And that is really not a good idea. And this is not a problem with images built with Customizer. You can do all the stuff that you would also be able to do interactively by booting it first. You can install new plugins. You can change the configuration. You can do all the nifty things. You can also install new tools. So for example, if you need to add something like AVR Dude or something, though I think Octopi already includes that, but you know, something like this, you can pre-install this. And so the most common tasks are also outlined here. Uh, updating Octoprint to the latest release, pre-installing additional plugins, additional tooling, customizing the configuration and how to do that. So all of this is ready to be used. And it all consists just of some bash scripts that are then run through Customizer and do all the heavy lifting for you. So if you are someone who's always wanted to customize their own Octopi uh, build, for themselves or even for a larger audience, then please take a look at Customizer for that because that will make sure that you do so in a safe manner that doesn't open up anyone who uses the image to abuse um, due to shared secrets and all that. Yeah. Okay, that was that. <laughs> um, then. What I also did the past couple of weeks was uh, somewhere at the end or at the, from mid April to early September, I also had a vacation. I, I At this point, I have already forgotten most about it again, again sadly. But the, the highlight of that was that I went to, a, went to a bird sanctuary and you might have noticed that I have a new avatar on the social uh, networks because of this, because yeah, that was rather fun. There were a, a whole bunch of parrots. So it actually was not a bird sanctuary, but a parrot sanctuary. 
and you could actually go into the cages with them and feed them and they would hop around on your shoulders and start to disassemble your clothing and uh, steal stuff that wasn't nailed down so they are quite a mischievous bunch here and there but also some of them were, were very uh, cuddle friendly so yeah um lots of good times we spent several hours there like like a whole day and it was an amazing experience if you ever get a chance to do something like this then i can only recommend to do that because it's a really a wonderful experience uh, interacting with the burps i also did a lot a lot of catching up on my movie collection played through axiom verge 2 and slept a lot and that about sums up my vacation i fear because thanks to the ongoing pandemic situation we did not go anywhere but the burp sanctuary then, between my vacation and this thing that come, came after the vacation, there was also some downtime where, not downtime, actually productive time, <laughs> where I uh, was able to do the third release candidate of 170 and everything that surrounded that, but also a bunch of days, or rather I think two of them, where I was able to finally work on something that I had also started on before the vacation, which is the relaunch of data.octoprint.org. And uh, let me quickly show you how that turned out. So um, you might remember that uh, I usually show you some stats here and I always said I want to make them more publicly available. And I also had something in place since uh, December that was um, contributed by someone. And uh, I had this itch for a while now to look into extending the graphs that were available on them and make everything a bit more modular and while at it maybe also use it as a React um, exercise for me. Because as we remember, at some point, Octoprint will need a new UI, a refreshed UI, and uh, yeah, the current contender for framework to use is React. And this is the result. So um, you have this whole bunch of graphs now, instances, version distribution, printing stats, Python statistics. And what you can see here is something that makes me very, very happy because 170 now tells you to please upgrade to Python 3 if you're still running on Python 2. And that seems to have some effect as we can see here, because this here is where Octoprint 170 was released. And since then, this graph is finally showing some movement again. Um, server environment stats, operating system, number of bits, core count and stuff, client environment. This is something that's new with 170. So I now, now, uh, now can get some information on which browsers you're all using. And uh, I was kind of surprised to see how many of you are using Chrome, but that's good to know because that tells me I need to test this more uh, aggressively uh, under this browser. And what operating system firmware stats are also now public. So take a look at that if you are curious about the current statistics and you can also switch to the seven day view up here if you're interested in that rather than the 30 day and switch back again and you also have a light mode if you absolutely want to be blinded um yeah okay and that was actually a rather good exercise i have to say and charlie was also so nice to port it then over to the new material version so i also now have an idea uh, what changed there okay so what else did happen? Uh, you noticed that the last one was the last one episode of these was a long time ago. That one reason for that was the vacation. The other reason for that was a knee surgery. Um, so uh, it took me a really long while to decide on doing that and uh, actually more than three years. Um, and the reason is, or rather the thing is so, I've been living most of my life with severe, severe knee pain, so at least 25 years in both knees, actually, from time to time, they just started to really ache and, and sometimes also produce quiet, disturbing grinding noises and stuff, especially when the weather changed, but also just out of a whim. And the past couple, uh, the, the, the last three years has actually gotten really, really bad with the left knee. Uh, so much so that I spent uh, several days up to maybe even two or three weeks with every day being in pain uh, these past three summers especially more it's worse in the summer than in the winter and that prompted me to finally get this looked at again by an orthopedist and we decided to do a minimal uh, invasive surgery to fix what we thought was only a plica syndrome but on closer look turned out to also be a teared meniscus uh, so uh, recovery has been a bit slower than anticipated and um, so my surgery was exactly, well not ex exactly, but all, uh, yeah, 
one month and one day ago on uh, September 20th. And um, I spent two weeks on crutches and painkillers and uh, not being able to think straight at all and really bad swelling as well. And I have several weeks of physiotherapy still ahead of me and already behind me. So um, I gotta admit that I severely underestimated this and uh, also severely underestimated my own impatience. So yeah, if you were wondering what I was up to and why the the the, uh, the final release of 170 was taking its sweet time after the third RC, that is the reason because the surgery was a week after the third RC and yeah, then I didn't dare to do the stable release because I was not really fit for work for way too long time. Yeah, but yeah, I'm back in the office now since two weeks, I think, or two or three, maybe something like that. And I'm trying my best to do the usual amount of stuff, but I will admit that uh, I cannot sit as long yet to, to really do full days in the office. So some days it works and some days it just hurts. So today is one of the letters, um, the letter days. Uh, so, so right after recording this, I will probably uh, put the leg up a bit and put some uh, cooling pack on it but yeah that is the reason and yeah it's been a quite humbling experience you really only notice how much you depend on a knee and how much you like your personal freedom of being able to do everything without help when you can't all of a sudden anyhow back to something more how, how should I say something more joyful maybe <laughs> um, so uh, at the beginning of this month, uh, there was also some, so something like two weeks, actually, I think after my surgery, there was also the GitHub internal conference, uh, GitHub Nova for the GitHub stars. And I've been a GitHub star for, for, over, for, for yeah, pretty much exactly a year now, I think. And this was the second Nova event that I took place in. That's always a ton of fun because you get to chat more and, and really spend some time with your fellow GitHub stars. And um, you also get some interesting insights that I'm not allowed to share here <laughs> into uh, GitHub and GitHub's plans and all that. And um, we also have the GitHub Star Awards, uh, awards where we where the where they um, award um, uh, 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 give uh, give out awards to the stars. And uh, last year I won. Let me see. Oops, if I can pick that up here. Last year I won that little guy here. That was the Community Growth Award for 2020, and actually the first one they, they that was ever handed out because the Stars program only started last year. And this year I won the GitHub Star of the Year Award, which completely and utterly surprised me. But Whoa, that was a really pleasant surprise, especially right after the surgery, pretty much. So yeah, I hope that uh, sometime soon I will be able to hold two of these into the into the lens here. Uh, and uh, yeah. Um, okay, so this is all that happened, or pretty much all of the ex at least the, the stuff that is interesting to you. I hope uh, that happened. Uh, and that brings us to the question of what are the next steps. So. Um, frankly, one of the biggest next steps for me is actually recovery. Uh, as I said, I still cannot sit as long as I would like and actually need to in order to work uh, full days. And I also have to admit that, uh, yeah, this thing healing is taking up way more energy than I anticipated. I'm exhausted all the damn time and uh, actually I only just started sleeping through the nights again. Um, but nevertheless, I will keep on working on Octoprint, in, uh, working on Octoprint as much as I can, and probably often also more than I should. But um, just know that for now, I will have to think, have to take things a bit slower than I usually do. Um, this probably annoys me more than it does annoy you, because this is not. This, this does not match my own expectation of myself and what I can do. Um, but I have to listen to my body right now. And it's telling me clearly that, uh, yeah, sitting eight hours in front of a PC and not moving is not something that I should be doing right now. Um, also, uh, yeah, you, you really do not want me to work on stuff when I'm uh, 
when I can't concentrate very well because of pain and such. So when things like that happen, I will rather concentrate on organizational matters or something, stuff that also needs to be done and usually would be done next to everything else, but try to not co touch code in the meantime. Uh, I, I mean, not in the meantime, but not when uh, when it comes to that. But yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll 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 figure that out. And I hope things will change again soon. And yeah. So what else will I do? Or what what else are the next steps? Yeah. Well, um, as I said, the last uh, the 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 things that I have been up to mostly included one seven zero and a bunch of extracurricular ex activities, so to speak. Um, so what I did not really make any progress on the past iteration was working on 2.0 and this is something that I would like to get back to as soon as the concentration permits um, and get the whole branch merging working again yeah and also yeah these are next steps for you but actually something that I have been up to because that's already have has been pre-recorded and sent in and I don't have to do anything about it anymore is um, next week there will be on, on the 27th and on the 28th GitHub Universe will take place and I actually will um, give a talk there or or rather there will be a talk for me available there for on-demand streaming on Customizer. So if you want to see uh, take a closer look there and maybe get some more details on how that works and uh, how to use it and, and, and an example and a, a short walkthrough maybe through the Octoprint, Oct uh, Octopi up to date uh, script and all that, then you might want to check that out. Okay, so that brings us to the uh, segment where we take a quick look at the step. Yeah, so you've all seen that and as usual we only see the last seven days because uh, the last 30 brings the tracking server to a grinding halt. I am looking into uh, fixing this but for now uh, we'll have to live with the last seven days and if you want to get more information you can always just check data.octopus org because there you get the exports for the past 30 days and that gives you a bit of a different view but still a bit of a larger view as well okay so we can see that 170 has already caught up a lot we currently see 229k or so 229k uh in uh, 21.9.9.k uh, over the past 24 hours uh if we if we look at the um, versions over time here, we also see that the 161 in green and 170 uh, in yellow are converging slowly but steadily. I hope that sometime around next week we will see them crossing over, at which point 170 will be the majority. Um, and we can also see that uh, 170 is already seeing the, the majority of the print jobs, which is good. And we also have already 440k um uh, uh 440k hours printed during the seven the last seven days on this version um now you remember that last time i said that uh, we now get these client uh opened events and and now that the graph is actually looking more interesting than it did in the last segment uh, in the last in the last episode because now we actually have more than just uh, just drcs that are getting locked here so you can clearly see where the update was um determined st uh, determined stable and rolled out and since then these uh, this graph has grown more and more interesting as each day goes i'm going to look for, I'm, I'm really looking forward as to how um uh, how that will develop over time and, and, and also to see if there are any patterns that will emerge like for example here we can see that during the weekends there are more sessions established which is kind of what i would have expected but it's still nice to see of course the most interesting part here is really the the browser versions that are being used and the browsers themselves that are being used and also uh, to a certain degree the operating systems the underlying ones of the on the client side that are being used because this now will give me an insight into what browsers i should test again and also what browsers are not used so i can know whether i need to support them or not um, and that will hopefully help a ton in the future uh, during development yeah and uh, that brings us to the q a segment and as i said we only have two so we are quickly going to go through those so the first question is by mikkel and uh, uh, it is what's your favorite plugin 
And uh, I hope I know this was not the intention of this question, but I'm still going to say uh, the printer firmware check, which is one of my own. And the reason is not because this is a plugin that helps me personally so much when I use Octoprint, or probably also not doesn't help you that much when you use Octoprint. The general majority will hopefully not not ever not not ever really interact with it, but it helps a ton um with um, printer safety out there and also alerting users about compatibility issues and thus cutting back on support questions because it immediately tells them hey you need this plugin for your printer to work with octoprint because it has a broken firmware and uh, this works around it or something like this so um the problem is that really way too many uh printers out there cheap printers out there and cheap printer vendors actually a cut way too many corners and usually safety gets uh gets on the shopping block uh first and um yeah this worries me i have to say especially as the author of something that a lot of people despite the warnings against it will use to print when they aren't even remotely nearby in order to shut off the printer quickly should it catch fire or something else go wrong uh, catastrophically so being able to detect printers that are known to not have any safety functions and alerting the user about that and annoying the user with this maybe so much so that they will do something against it and flash a firmware or install electronics that are proper uh, properly uh, implemented and safe uh, that helps me sleep at night, I have to say. And it also, I hope, uh, hel um, helps some of you sl uh, to sleep at night. Okay, and since this probably was not really what this question was meant to tickle out of me, um, yeah, one of the ones, one of the plugins, or, or maybe, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, favorite above all plugins, but one plugin that I ab absolutely uh, use a ton is the Tasmota plugin, because I have this on every single Octoprint instance here that is not a virtual one, um, because uh, all my printers have smart plugs flashed with Tasmota, and um, I prefer having the printer powered down and uh, from mains when I'm not actually using it. It just makes me feel safer, which brings us back to safety concerns. And the Tasmota plugin just makes this incredibly easy because it will automatically switch it on and stuff uh, uh, when I need it to. But just a click and then it connects and things and that is just nice. And it will also switch it off again if it's idle too long, which is nice. Yeah. So maybe not exactly what I wanted, what you wanted to hear, but this is what I'm going to give you. Okay, and the next question by, uh, yeah, Anonymous, basically. Uh, was there any discussions with Prusa about using Octoprint before they decided to develop their Prusa Connect? It would have been great to have the development team working with you instead of them making their own version of a similar software solution. Uh, I agree, that would have been nice, but no, there has been no collaboration at all or no interaction at all in that. They did this on their own and I have, I, at least I cannot remember even even a remote discussion in that direction. So yeah, sadly also not the first time because uh, I had to learn from a press release that the INZ that they shipped with the Mark III back then uh, was supposed to work with the Raspberry Pi Zero running Octoprint on it. And if they had reached out to me beforehand, which I would be happy to have done under an NDA or something like that, um, they, uh, they, yeah, I would have told them that this is an inherently bad idea because the Raspberry Pi Zero uh, W is really not suited for the task of running Octoprint. I know, I know a lot of you are of a different opinion because it has not caused you any problems personally, but it has caused me problems when I tried it. And if it can cause performance issues for me, then it will this do this as well in the field. And that means I cannot generally recommend running it and actually can only recommend against using it. And um, yeah, but back to the question in hand. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's just, uh, it is like it is. And some companies just prefer to work uh, or, or to develop everything in-house, which I can understand uh, actually, because yeah, it just gives you more control uh, and more um, liberties also in, in, in deciding how in which, in which direction and, and how to develop something. So yeah, I guess that, was the reason that they decided to do that. I don't know, because as I said, no connection there, but yeah, it is like it is, and we'll just have to live with it. 
Okay. And that was already the two questions. And that also now brings me at the end of this already. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, I guess. And if you, uh, if you, if you enjoyed this, then please remember to like, share and subscribe the usual stuff, you know, um, and, uh, yeah. I hope the next one will not take that long to get out and I also hope the next one I'll be able to do this live again. Uh, this time I decided against it because of, frankly my calendar is currently littered with physical therapy appointments and uh, it, it it makes it a bit tricky to, uh, so yeah, I especially on Fridays funnily enough. Um, so I figured let's just record it again and uh, don't put more stress on uh, on, on the calendar basically <laughs> yeah okay but then uh yeah uh i hope as i said i hope it was interesting and uh, until next time all that's left to say is stay, he stay healthy uh happy printing and i hope to see you again soon bye bye